This podcast is brought to you by Giant Food. And today, more than ever, they are committed to you because we are all in this together so we can continue to share the little things that matter. Recorded live from the lobby of the Line Hotel in Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Full Service Radio is proudly supported and hosted by Simplecast, the easiest way for a podcast creator to publish and distribute audio on the internet. For more information, visit simplecast.com. Peace, everyone, and welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa L. Jones, broadcasting live from the lobby of The Line, D.C. This podcast is where dynamic people of color in the food and agriculture space share their personal food journeys, passions, and perspectives that stem from the land, all exemplifying the spirit of activism in their own edible way. Let's get started. Peace and welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa L. Jones, broadcasting here on Full Service Radio. So on today's show, I'm super excited to have back a wonderful, wonderful guest, DC native, firefighter, and EMT, Jonathan Tate, who is the founder of Food on the Stove with a mission to provide tools and resources to help firefighters live a healthier lifestyle through enhanced nutrition and exercise. Jonathan's dad was a firefighter who passed away during his teenage years due to a heart attack. So realizing that the number one cause of death of firefighters is heart disease, Jonathan set out to educate first responders in the district, setting an example all over. Welcome back to Edible Activist, Jonathan. You're, You're alum now. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be back. My first Edible Activist was my first podcast, and I'm so excited to be back. Wonderful, wonderful. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. And I very much so enjoyed just having you in the studio when things were normal, right? (laughs) Exactly. It's crazy times we're living in, but um, I believe we will make it through. Absolutely. Well, firstly, I have to say thank you for your service because, you know, while many of us can work from home, you know, you don't have that luxury. So I just want to acknowledge that. And um, during our very first interview, which was episode 26, in case you guys are listening. So go back to episode 26. Um, you know, I was able to learn about your personal relationship to food and you educated us on the number one leading cause of death for firefighters, which I, I had no clue. And you shared some some amazing just fresh um, farm fresh food experiences that your fellow firefighters and EMTs have enjoyed in the past and just different food experiences and other initiatives that Food on the Stove um, had launched. So um, here we are again um, in the the middle, now in the middle of a pandemic. And um, I know and sure that your work has become even more demanding, but the mission doesn't stop, right? No doubt. No doubt. The mission does not stop. Um, These are chaotic times that we're living in, but this is what firefighters are called to do, to step up and to serve their community. So the job um, has changed a little bit, uh, but we we welcome it and we welcome to serve our community. Absolutely. Well, you know, are there, so again, I mean, you just mentioned a few mo- a, a moment ago that things have changed a bit. What are the realities um, that, that firefighters and EMTs are, are facing right now um, that weren't prior to all of this? Well, the um, the residents of D.C. have always um, been the priority. They've always been the mission to uh, protect and to serve and to um, protect life and property. Um, but COVID has thrown its challenges at D.C. Fire and EMS, and I'm sure at everybody across the country. Um, so what we're seeing is that a, re- re- a regular medical call isn't regular anymore because um, with COVID-19 being such a highly contagious virus, uh, there's a little bit 
more that goes into running these uh, emergency medical calls. Wow. So are there any like extra layer, you know, we're, so we're all out, right? We're at the grocery store. Some of us, for some of us who are still venturing out, we're at the grocery stores and some of us are still taking walks and, you know, making our, our essential runs, right? And we are wearing masks and covering up and, and wearing gloves, which is th- all things that, you know, firefighters and EMTs have been accustomed to. So with that said, are there any other like extra layers of protection and or precaution that you all have to take in the middle of these times? Yeah, definitely. So um, whereas before, prior to COVID-19, we may go on to a scene with, um, you know, just general PPE, personal protective equipment, um, being gloves and maybe a mask every now and then. But now we're going into full PPE where there's gowns and there's hats and there's booties and we have our gloves on, um, our masks and our protective eyewear. Um, because like we said, COVID is highly contagious. Um, and we've had, uh, staffing, not so much staffing issues, but we've had on DC Fire and EMS, uh, a hundred members who have contracted the virus, which can, um, cause some challenges to staffing. We have 70 who have fully recovered and are now back to work. But you can imagine with a hundred people contracting the virus and those people being off um, and us working the 24 hour shifts, that can be a bit of a challenge when it comes to um, staffing. Wow. Wow. Thank God for their recovery. I mean, the ones who are putting really putting their lives on the lines, um, you know, everyone's at risk, but when you are, um, you know, out in in a space where, you know, we're in the middle of this health pan- pandemic and um, it's just, it's an extra, a, an extra layer of risk, you know, and exposure for you all. So, you know, my, my other question for you is, and we're going to, um, in just a few moments, touch more on the amazing mission of Food on the Stove and, and what you all have been cultivating out um, on the grounds. But, do you foresee like, you know, emergency preparedness, you know, when we talk about preparedness on this show, you know, we more so talk in, in the space of like growing an agriculture and, you know, always being self, you know, sufficient and, and reliant. Right. But we never talk about emergency when pandemics happen, you know, but we're but we are always talking to activists who are always preparing for something and they want to be a, a keeper uh, a, a cultivator of their own food and, you know, um, a creator of their own household, you know, um, items and et cetera. But we never talk about emergency preparedness. And just from your perspective as a, a firefighter and EMT, how do you, and if, if any at all, do you foresee emergency preparedness looking different in the future? And, you know, it's also, and when we talk about emergency preparedness, we also know that, you know, this is no secret that our communities of colors and our marginalized communities are going to be affected the most by it because they've already always been affected by the systems. But, you know, just from your perspective, how do you foresee emergency preparedness looking like in the future? Because it is going to be a bit different. Um, I think this was a wake up call for us all. Um Fire and EMS employees, we train constantly to be able to do our job efficiently and effectively. Um, but with the coronavirus, it's tough to train for because it's so much that we don't know. So we can train on a visible fire. We can train on uh, smoke patterns and how they travel through buildings. We can even train on how to treat a patient um, from a medical perspective. Um, but when you're talking about a virus who was that's unseen and we really don't know too much about it right now. Um, I think the, the idea now for, especially for fire and EMS employees is how do we better take care of ourselves? How do we, um, because we're out in the public, we can pass off the virus just as well as it can be given to us. Um, And we come in contact with so many people. Uh, So we, we need to really be taking care of ourselves, making sure that we're, practicing washing our hands after every call. Some of those things you can get a bit lax on when you're working the job for 10, 15 years. You just kind of um, take for granted and kind of get a little bit desensitized to some of the threats that are out there. Um, so what we want to do is really um, 
kind of hone in on those small things. The little things make a big difference. So we want to make sure that we're practicing um, safe cleaning habits, that we're cleaning up our firehouses, that we're washing our hands, that we're deconning our units um, and doing everything that we can do to protect ourselves, but also to protect the patient because we're the ones who are transporting them to the hospital. We're the ones treating them on these scenes. And if we're getting sick, it's easy for us to pass off that um, virus to someone else. So I think in the future, what you'll see is just like we train on everything else, uh, we'll be training on the small things as well that can tend to be overlooked. Wow. Wow. So speaking of, you know, taking care of first responders and making sure that you all protect it, you know, you have this still wonderful mission, food on the stove, you know, to educate, you know, firefighters, first responders, EMTs, you know, on, you know, staying healthy and remaining healthy and incorporating a healthy lifestyle. Because, you know, from what I learned from our last show, it isn't for the most part, I mean, yes, you guys see trauma on a daily and every time you're out to the rescue, you know, that's another, that's, 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 that's risk, right? But there's the food aspect and really what it is, the leading cause of, of um, death of firefighters is heart disease. And so that's why you created food on the stove because you want to educate EMTs and firefighters on, listen, you know, if we're trying to save lives, we got to save ourselves first and make sure that we're good and we're okay. And so, as I said, you know, I've been watching the, your movement. I've been watching, you know, the initiatives and the outpour of support that you've been receiving from the community. It's just, I'm sure it's so gratifying. And dad is just smiling. Oh, dad is smiling. <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. So when, um, COVID-19 first started, um, you know, Food on the Stove is all about fine EMS employees. That's, uh, we we really try to um, provide any tool and any resource that we have um, for them to make sure that we're there to serve them. We like to say we serve those who serve us. So I was actually in a grocery store um, shopping uh, for my own household. And when I noticed that all the proteins were gone, um, firefighting is the only occupation that has to cook all three meals while at work. Um, and with all the grocery stores kind of shelves being bare with everybody kind of stockpiling food, and I can understand people um, being a little antsy and anxious in this uh, pandemic, um, it kind of left the firefighters scrambling, uh, at least from what my eyes saw. I said, when we go to work the next day, how are we going to be able to feed ourselves? And even when grocery store shelves were restocked, um, they were limiting uh, people to two items per household. Um, and for firefighters, that really doesn't work when you're trying to feed 15 people. Uh, so we wanted to do something. We wanted to make sure that uh, firefighters were getting uh, food and that uh, we can help them take a load off because they had so much to do as far as deconning units and things like that. So one of the things we did, I decided to partner with uh, local restaurants, uh, which we were able to feed numerous firefighters and since the start of May, March 16th, and we've been feeding them um, weekly, uh, even up until today, we have so many partners that have um, have partnered with us and have been so generous with donations. And really, they, there are some restaurants that we probably wouldn't normally partner with, taking our mission, um, when you take into consideration our mission, but really what took precedence over our mission or our um, our message was, um, you know, just caring for firefighters, making sure that they had what they needed. We can always get back to the message, but we wanted to make sure that they knew um, we cared about them. And I think in the long run, that will uh, make it a lot easy. Our message will be a lot more receptive because they know we care about them, not just pushing our message on them. So we were able to donate. Uh, we partnered with Ruth Chris, who donated 400 states to DC Fine EMS, where they donated to us and we donated it to DC Fine EMS. So we had everything from filet mignons and tomahawk steaks and we were feeding firefighters and we partnered with Eat Birds on Capitol Hill and we were able to get grass-fed hamburgers for them and Chick-fil-A and just numerous restaurants that have been oh so generous and Ted's Bullets. And I can name and go on and on and on about how the community has stepped up and really supported our frontline workers. And we're so grateful for that partnership and um, we just appreciate them. What more can we say of uh, that sign of that show of generosity? 
That is so great. And I saw the homies turning natural out there. Oh, yeah. and- I can't forget about turning natural. They have um they align so much with our mission. Um and I'm I've been a a, a big supporter of turning natural. I live in Ward 8, so I always am at Turner Natural with seeing Clinton and Jerry, and I just appreciate them so much as well. They pulled out their firehouses and just donated so many smoothies, and uh, they still are donating smoothies and, and wheat smoothies and uh, veggie patties and spinach patties, and we really appreciate their support as well. Man, them, them spinach patties be on point. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you telling? I at least get two every time I go. You have to get two spinach patties whenever you go to Turn It Natural, not one. And the Bob Marley with spinach. You can't forget the Bob Marley with spinach. The bomb, the bomb. And that's exactly, you know, just going back to, you know, just a community of of restaurants and, and, you know, who care. That's what I see. Like, we care, you know, and these are these are restaurants, you know, these are owners, these are line cooks and chefs, you know, who are still, you know, putting, you know, their health at risk by being out there. But it just, it really just shows, you know, people really pulling together in this community because it, like like you said, you all have to cook every single meal. And, you know, you, you want that meal to be of substance and, you know, you want it to have, you know, uh, 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 you want it to be, I could say the word healthy, but you you get what I'm right. saying. Like, I mean, your whole mission is to really just support this lifestyle so that you all can do the work that you're called to do, but also, you know, have a healthy heart, you know, have a healthy immune system, drinking the juices, drinking the smoothies, you know? So it's so very important. And again, I saw, I literally, when I saw that, I was just like, wow, I was like food on the stove. Tate, like y'all not playing no games at all. (laughs) We were trying. By the grace of God, we've been able to really be um, um, very active during this time. I I like to think that uh, COVID-19 has uh, allowed us, uh, though it has uh, put a strain on so much, it allowed us to really show that um, that the community can come together and that we really care about not just our first responders, but the community as well. And back to a lot of these small businesses, it just goes to show their selflessness because they're not getting the traffic that they normally get, um, but yet they're still willing to give. And I think it's something to be said about that, how a community can come together um, and for the common good to make sure that we're taking care of one another. And that's what a community really is. That is so true. All right, guys, we're going to take a really short break and we'll be right back. You're listening to Perfect Day, produced by Artists Authentic. For more of Authentic's work, visit allornothingstudios.com. This podcast is brought to you by Giant Food. Whether you are concerned about diabetes, heart health, losing weight, or just want to improve family meal times, Giant has a team of nutritionists ready to help you make the best decisions to meet your health and wellness goals. You can check out their personalized consultations online or by phone. Just go to giantfood.com nutrition, or they have nutritionists who are available to answer any of your questions at nutrition at giantfood.com. Okay, so Jonathan, um, you all are um, launching your local food for local heroes meal delivery, doing a pilot. And I am so super excited about this. And I want the tea. I want all the tea here on Edible Activists, okay? Please let me and the audience know what this meal service is all about. Well, if if you've ever heard of um, Blue Apron or Sun Basket or Hello Fresh, these are meal delivery services that um, are for the household. They give you a recipe or numerous recipes. They throw all the ingredients into the box, packaged up real pretty, real nicely, um, and they send it to your house. They deliver it to your house, and um, um, they have some amazing meals. We, my wife and I, we um, ordered from one of them before. 
I'm not going to give any plugs, but we've ordered for one, uh, a couple of them before. And uh, the meals have been amazing, but it's one house that, or a few houses that these companies have forgotten about, specifically speaking, the firehouse. Um, so what we wanted to do was cater towards the firefighters and provide some healthier meals for them. So we started Local Food for Local Heroes, which is a meal delivery service um, that we had our trial run on Friday. And the thought process is, is that we can help change the culture of the fire service one meal at a time. We like to say change and heart, help, the health and hearts of firefighters one meal at a time. So what we do is we um, source the food, whether it be um, from urban farms locally, we would love to partner with um, local farms uh, right in our area because that way it can be hyper local, but we source from anywhere in this region. Uh, and our first recipe was Peruvian chicken, coleslaw, and roasted sweet potatoes. We packaged it all up at Union Market and it was delivered to the first battalion, six firehouses last Friday. And um, the response was amazing that the firefighters just loved it. And what we want to see is that these recipes will become staples in the firehouse moving forward, because right now there's a lot of good meals, that, but there's a lot of unhealthy meals. So we think that if we can get the younger members or some of the members to start preparing these meals, the next 20 years, we'll see some of these same healthy meals within the firehouse. And that within that, we can create some real change. Because we're not only telling you what to cook, we're giving you the food. And this um, meal delivery service is free for firefighters. We don't charge them anything for it. We fundraise for it. So every $10 that's given, uh, it it goes to a meal for a firefighter. It goes to uh, the packaging, the purchase, and the delivery of the meal. Um, so for, for $10, a firefighter eats a healthy, a healthy meal. And um, we've raised enough to feed 700 firefighters in D.C. Fire and EMS, and we hope to continue the mission going that we can um, feed the whole fire department on a weekly basis, if not every day. Jonathan, do you sleep? Um, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little bit. I mean, my sleep has, uh, has not been as uh, good lately, but firefighters don't sleep. That's one of the things that uh, we struggle with now. Um, you know, we struggle with a lot of sleep deprivation in the fire service. We work 24 hour shifts um, and D.C. is a very busy city. Uh, so we don't sleep much while at work. Uh, so we are we really want people to focus in on eating healthy because there's so many things that are stacked up to, against firefighters. Uh, the lack of sleep, um, the hazardous environments that we go in, the stress of the job, all these things add to um, heart disease in the fire service. So we want firefighters to control the controllable. Uh, you can't control any of those things. So the best way to combat heart disease in the fire service is through diet and exercise. And I think Local Food for Local Heroes is a program that can not only impact D.C. Fire and EMS and their families, but uh, impact the fire service as a whole as we start to branch out and we see these food uh, boxes in fire houses all across the country. And you know what? And what with the amount of trauma that you all just, you know, witness and experience on a daily, have you ever, you know, not that I'm trying to turn this into a whole business conversation, but while we're on the topic of, of, of everything, um, you know, with the help at, you know, with the food aspect, you know, have you ever entertained like pulling in different aspects, you know, from the mental, mental wellness you know, um, I know there's an the exercise component. I saw that you all did an event, you know, some weeks back. Um, but, you know, have you have you thought about, you know, like pulling in a, a mental wellness component or, you know, it, I think it'd be neat to see firefighters doing some yoga. Right. Yeah, so, so one of the things that we're working on right now, um, and it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. Is because everything that we do, we want to base around food. So we have seen uh, PTSD is a big thing in the fire service now. We are seeing uh, more and more firefighters commit suicide. I believe in the last five years, we've had three members of DC Fire and EMS uh, commit suicide, and we've we see firefighters see the worst of everything. Um, firefighters and EMS employees that see the worst of everything. So one of the programs that where we, we're trying to put together currently is something called Food for Thought. And it's a small group where we get 
um, 12 individuals together and we sit around with a facilitator and we really just talk about our issues, talk about some of the things that we've seen and it's around food. So we want to center this gathering around great meals, sitting at the dinner table and really just talking as a family because the fire service is a brotherhood, a sisterhood. It's a family. I mean, we're there for 24 hours. We um, put our life on the line with each other. Everybody goes home. That's the motto. And um, yeah, so we we are working on that. That's dynamic. That is so dynamic. And I chuckle, but I'm so, you know, just it was really a real question, a serious question, because, you know, one of the things that um, a lot of folks don't talk about just, you know, general, you know, in the general health space, people don't talk about how doctors commit suicide. That is a thing, you know, like that, that is a thing and not, not comparing your role to a doctor, but just being in that, that health sphere, you know, that suicide is, 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 that is real, you know, and seeing that amount of trauma that would create that PTSD, that is su- that is super, super, super serious. And just putting yourself at risk. You have a family. I remember I was listening to an interview and it was a um, dope black woman. She was like fire chief of, um, fire chief of some station, I think out in, in Chicago. And she, one of the things she had mentioned, mentioned, she was just like, listen, she was like, when I leave my family, like when I go out to work, you just don't know if you're coming back and not to, you know, sound so morbid. She was just really laying out the, you know, the, the realities of her job. You know, she was like, it's mental more than anything, everything that we see on a daily. So that is so needed. And I'm so glad that you thought about that. So super cool. Um, Jonathan, are we going to see a garden project in the near future? <laughs> you like I'm tossing out all these ideas. <laughs> I love it. Right. But one one of the things that I know for me is that we never want to oversaturate the market with anything. And I think COVID-19 is starting to show us that uh, there has been a bit of an oversaturation and you should do what you do and do it well. But I think there's so many people doing an awesome job at these gardens that why can't we partner with them and really pour into the community and help these companies and these um, local growers grow their business as well? Because we have the firefighters. We have people that need to eat. There's no no need for me to reinvent the wheel, um, but we can partner with them and really empower them because they're the experts on that. Um, and I would love to partner with other companies. Um, we would like to put some gardens at firehouses, but I would more so love to partner with other DC-based companies to really get this done. Listen, homie, I hear you. Stay in your lane, right? And partner with the folks who know what they're doing. I am with you. And listen, you know, all you got to do is say a word. You know, all you got to do is say a word. I can hook you up. I can make the connection. That's what we do here. And, you know, the mission, like I said, the mission doesn't stop. Again, um, I just, I thank you, you know, for your time, your, your leadership, you know, um, the whole squad, you know, every firefighter and EMT across DC, Maryland, Virginia, um, just really just want to say just thank you because we don't, we don't think about our first responders often. And those are the first that we call when things go down. So um, thank you so much for your time again, Jonathan. It was a pleasure. But so a couple things. Where can folks find you if they want to connect with you online? Um, we're at foodonthestove.org, www.foodonthestove.org. Um, we're on Instagram, Food on the Stove DC. Um, we're on uh, Twitter, Food on the Stove underscore DC. Um, you can find us there. Bet, bet. All right. So you know the drill. You know all about my rapid fire, right? No, come on with it. <laughs> All right, cool. Because I got a couple of newbies that you aren't familiar with, but you'll be fine. <laughs> All right. So, what is your favorite veggie? Okra. Yes, for the okra, fried, dyed, boiled. I can eat it all sorts of ways. Okay. okay. All right. Favorite fruit? Mango. Yum. All right. Sweet, spicy, sour, salty, or bitter? Uh, I'm going to have to go with spicy. I want to say savory, but spicy. Okay, not, too, not too spicy. All right. What's on your playlist these days? What you got in heavy rotation? Um, it can be that one song that's resonating or a couple artists. Let right. us know. It's just a lot of gospel music. Um, I... I want to say, 
Jonathan McReynolds, anything gospel, anything gospel. Okay. God has really been speaking to me. I'm so grateful for his grace and mercy, keeping my family and I healthy. I don't want to turn this into a whole preaching, a whole sermon, but I'm just so grateful for all that God has done for me. So, um, yeah, it's just a lot of gospel. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I don't underestimate, you know, leaving out of my house and coming back home safe. Like that's real talk. So I, I feel you. And I'm trying, look, I'm looking at my title. I'm just like, okay, so <laughs> let me tell you, I have had Deliver Me um, by Donna Lawrence. And um, who's the young lady who sings this song? Oh, I'm about to like start playing it right now. <laughs> Leandra, Leandra yeah, Johnson. Yeah. Oh, child, that's in Israel Halton to get my morning right. Hey. Because when people start emailing me and I got to go back to per my last email because y'all getting on my nerves, <laughs> I got to bring it right back. Hey, look, anything that speaks to your spirit right now, we need it. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. And thank you all for listening. Um, have a wonderful afternoon and peace. Peace. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We are here live on Full Service Radio every Wednesday at 11 a.m., where you can catch today's episode on fullserviceradio.org, as well as iTunes and Spotify. Be sure to follow me at Food Talks in Color on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Are you an edible activist? Sure you are. Come join me on the show. I would love to feature you. Just shoot me a DM on the gram. Peace and blessings all. And remember, there is no culture without agriculture.